What's up YouTubers? Welcome back. Today we are taking a look at yet another Joy Toy set. This time the 09 ST Legion Mecha Cavalry Group. This set is sold separately, so let's open them up and see what they're all about. Okay, I've taken everything out of the packaging and laid everyone out. I figured we'd take a look at each one of these individually. And I think we'll start with the actual Sergeant Major on the left over here. Let's look at his pamphlet. And on the front of the pamphlet it says 09 ST Legion Mecha Cavalry Sergeant Major. Same thing on the back. If we open it up. A nice picture of the actual figure. It actually shows you a nice picture of what the figure looks like without all his gear on. And I'll put a picture right here on the left to show you. This will actually save me a step near the end of the video. Because I know a lot of folks are interested in what these figures look like when they're not all geared up. And of course... The inside of the flap has the disassembly example for anybody that needs to do some repairs to their figures. Alright, let me put this back behind the figure. Now, with this particular figure, he actually comes with the green footlocker. Two guns, a nice stand, and a helmet. Now, there's some extra parts in the footlocker, which we'll take a look at afterwards. Let's look at the stand first. And this is a really fantastic looking stand. There's some cut yellow wires on the top. Looks like he dug out some technical stuff underground. It's got a great texture to it. Two foot pegs. On the bottom there's not much going on. But it is pretty heavy though. Let's take a look at his weapons next. He comes with this Uzi type weapon which we've seen with other figures. This is painted in white and black with a little bit of wash on it. It has great detail and this weapon actually was part of the Hammer of Steel review I just did so feel free to check that video out. And this will actually clip on the side of the figure. Next we'll take a look at his rifle. Now I, th I believe we've seen this rifle before except not in this color. I really like the white paint and the black with a speckling on it or wash. It really makes all the details pop on this gun. Okay, the next thing we'll take a look at is the actual foot locker. Now this is in a dark green with a danger sticker on top. And I really love the hinge work that they did on these because when you open and close it, it won't break. Now inside, this figure actually comes with a bandolier. And we'll take a look at that. And on this, it has a pouch. And some extra shotgun shells of some type. With another pouch and buckles. And this would just sling over the figure's shoulder. Let me put this over here out of the way. And we'll take a look at all the goodies inside the foot locker. Now, this figure actually comes with two sets of hands, closed fist and another set of gripping hands. Looks like some tan wrist replacement parts and one elbow replacement part. And what I've noticed with these new sets is we're not getting all those replacement parts that we used to get. They're not giving us the knee replacement or ankle replacement parts anymore. And I hope that uh, trend doesn't continue. Okay, let's bring in the Sergeant Major. Look at this great looking head sculpt on this figure. And I'm not sure if it's coming up on camera, but he's got a scar on the right side of his cheek. Great haircut. Really nice looking detail. He has a yellow scarf and a tan upper body chest armor with the emblem on his right side. Great looking belt. He has green armor on his upper thighs. Nice big knee pads. I really like these baggy pants. Looking on his shoulder, he has the number 9 on his armor. Got armor on his forearm. And here's some of the details on his belt. He's got an actual loop right there. Great detail going down to his boots. On the back of the armor. Again, we've seen this armor before, but not in this color. 
and it's got a great texture to it. Some more pouches on his belt. And of course the detail all the way down the back of his legs. Coming around to this side, again the number 9 on his upper shoulder. He's got another hook on his belt and here's the actual holster or clip to hold his pistol or Uzi. And I'll show you how that works. And I didn't heat this up so it might be a little tough. Should just clip in here. Yeah, just like that. So we can carry this around with him. And of course back around to the front. I really like this green and tan palette that they used on these figures. And of course, let's take a look at his helmet. He has a nice blue visor with the breather mask and the emblem on top. Great looking detail on this side with the yellow hoses or cords. Great detail on the back and another cord on this side. And there's another really good look at the emblem on top. And this actually fits on the figure pretty well. Just plugs on the figure like that. Oh, let me put this over here. And now you can get a really good look at what he looks like with his helmet on. And, and if you're not aware of the game Titanfall, this really screams Titanfall pilot to me. Just the design and the colors. Next up is the company commander. Grab his pamphlet. And this says 09 ST Legion Mecha Cavalry Company Commander. Same thing on the back. When we open it up, we can actually see the figure again without all his gear on. And I'll post another still picture. And of course the picture with the figure with all his gear on. When we flip it around, of course it has the disassembly example on the back of this and I will say that these newer figures are really haven't had any breakage or any issues put this back over here and grab the figure itself and we'll take a look at the head sculpt you can see this is a really great looking face Nice haircut. He has a tan scarf and a dark green body armor with the number nine emblem and the faction emblem. Some pouches on the front. A great looking belt. Now his thigh armor is dark brown or tan with the emblem on his left thigh. Nice big brown knee pads. Those same baggy pants. Now the armor on his shoulder is different from the previous figure. His gloves are black. And he has a carabiner on his belt with some more pouches. Coming around to the back. I really like the green and tan design on the back of his body armor. He has a first aid kit on his belt. And details down the back of his legs too. Coming around to this side. Same armor on his right arm. He actually has a clip or a holster on his thigh. But he uh, doesn't come with a pistol. But maybe we can clip his rifle on afterwards. We'll stand him up next to her. And we'll take a look at his actual rifle. Again, we've seen this rifle before. Looks like a souped up P90 of some type. It's got white and a yellow highlight. And the yellow carries across to this side of the gun. Let's look at the stand next. Now his stand is more desert based or sand based. Fantastic texture with some, I don't know, mechanical gears buried in the sand. And this looks like a buried helmet of some type. If you look at it just right, I thought it was a skull at first, but it looks more like a helmet to me. Foot pegs right here. And no design on the bottom of this one either. Let's grab the helmet. 
Now his helmet is different from the previous figure. He's got a bright red visor. Nice detail on this side of the helmet with the blue hose detail on the back. It carries all the way around to this side. And let's put it on the figure. Fits on there perfectly and I'll show you them side by side so you can see the difference. Two completely different helmets. But with the same color, you can tell they're part of the same team. Stand these back up. Now for his accessories, I didn't bother to take out of the clear baggie. He actually comes with the same bandolier as the Sergeant Major over here. He also comes with two sets of hands, closed fist and another set of gripping hands. And he too only comes with three wrist replacement parts and no repl replacement parts for his knees or ankles. And lastly, let's take a look at the captain. And why not? Let's take a look at her pamphlet. It's the same as the other two figures. I really like the Skeleton Forces logo that they use on this set. Of course, on the inside, it shows the figure all geared up and without all the armor on. And unfortunately, she doesn't come with any replacement parts. Nothing for her wrists, knees, or ankles. And the disassembly example on the back of the pamphlet. We'll look at her stand next. Now her stand is more forest based. You can see the downed log. Some branches on the ground. A couple of stones and great texture to it with the two foot pegs. And nothing on the bottom. This here we'll grab her gun next her gun also is black with the white paint on it it's got a great scope on top with the round drum just enough wash to bring out the detail carries along this side too looks like some type of silencer on the front or suppressor she comes with this scarf, and if you heat this up, it can be pretty pliable, but right now it's a little rigid. So you can put this on the figure and swap out the one that's on the figure right now if you want to and get a different look. She actually comes with one set of hands, and these are pretty tiny. Let me grab one of these and bring them in close, and you can see this is a different type of grip hand with maybe the trigger finger. She also comes with this blank head and a helmet. And let's look at the head first and the curious thing about this is they actually painted the lips on this. I'm not sure why they did that. Let me grab the captain. She has a beautiful looking face and I really like this head sculpt. The brown hair pulled up in a bun. Of course the light tan scarf around her neck. And the brown body armor with the pouches on the front. Nice looking belt. Coming down to her thigh, she's got the faction on her left thigh. And I really like the skull logo down on her shins. Just the number nine on her left shoulder. Take a look at her belt. Another pouch right here on the side. Pretty plain looking armor on the side of her legs. Coming around to the back. She actually has an upside down radio right there and this antenna is flexible and rubbery. So that actually bends out of the way if you need to. 
some shells on the back of her belt. And some nice looking detail down the back of her legs. Turn around to this side. We move her arm out of the way. We'll take a look at her carabiner on her belt. Let me see if I can't get this back in focus. There we go. And she actually has a pistol. Take this out. We'll get a good look at this. Nice looking detail on this pistol. And I believe it's just the right size for this figure because she can actually hold it in her hand really nicely. And we'll come back around to the front. Now, this just adds one more female to my ranks. And let's look at her helmet next. Get her to stand up. I think the red on this really makes the helmet pop with the black breather. It's tan with the black stripes going down the side. All the way around to the back. And carries around to this side. Now, we have to actually put the blank head on the figure to get this helmet on, so let's pop this head off. And grab the blank head, because the helmet won't fit on the sculpted head with the hair. And this just slides on the blank head like so. Nice. Nice looking detail on this figure. And now we can see all the figures with their different helmets on. I went ahead and put their weapons in their hands so you can actually see how they hold them. Let's grab the Sergeant Major first. He's holding on to that gun perfectly. Sighting down that sight. Let's see if he can pull off a few rounds. Yep, no problem at all. Next, we'll look at the captain. And, of course, the same thing. She's got that gun shouldered. Have her squeeze off a few rounds. And even though her hands are a little smaller, she can still hold on to this gun really nicely. And lastly, the company commander. Let him squeeze off a couple rounds. Now, if you find that the hands that come on the figure generally don't work, of course you always have those other set of hands you can swap them out with, but it seems like these hands do the job just fine. And it's articulation time. Now the articulation is the same for all three of these figures. The only difference between the male and female is the female only has a single neck joint with a single dumbbell, whereas the male figures has a double neck joint. We'll start out with the head. You can look left and right. You can actually look up really far, down really far. And with that double neck joint, nice range of motion here. Come over to a shoulder. That raises up this far. Rotates 360 degrees. He can put his arms straight up. Come down to the elbow. That rotates 360 degrees. A nice tight 90 degree bend. As far as his wrist, this wrist goes in this direction and this direction and rotates 360 degrees. Now for his other hand, this wrist actually goes in the up and down direction to better hold his weapon. Now, this figure has a diaphragm joint, which is covered with the armor. But he also has a waist joint right there, which he can rotate left and right. He can bend back this far and bend forward this far. And of course, you get a little bit more range of motion without the chest armor on. Coming down to his legs, you can do the splits pretty well. He has a cut in his upper thigh 
right here so you can rotate his leg in this direction and of course you know what time it is Spartan kick forward this far this is Sparta and he's got a double knee joint right here down to his foot he can point his toe down he can point his foot up this is on a rocker and of course he can point his toe because there's a joint right here so another great figure with great articulation from joy toy Let's wrap up the video by doing some comparisons with some other 118 scale figures. Here's another female from the Joy Toy line. How about a 25th anniversary crankcase figure from G.I. Joe? I'll bring in my big boy, the custom hammer figure from my soon to be Ronin company. He towers over everybody. A Marauders figure, my custom muskrat figure. And lastly, let's bring in a pilot from the newly released Halo line. And this gives you a really good view of the height differences across the multiple lines. And now for my final thoughts. This is a fantastic set to add to your collection. The only gripe I have is the missing replacement parts that we've really gotten used to getting from Joy Toy. The paint's on point, the weapons look great, and I absolutely like the color palette that they went with for these figures. If you have the means, go ahead and add them to your collection. You won't be disappointed. And as always, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you like what you see, join the community and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell for notifications of upcoming videos. And remember, help a fellow collector out and share your knowledge.